Ah, uh, Mark Scott reporting. I'm going to talk about some uh, three topics today. I'll talk about homelessness in um, in Argentina. Uh, a little bit about Trump and his healthcare philosophy, <laughs> or lack thereof. And we'll talk about uh, Jesse Smollett. Um, Jesse Smollett getting an FBI probe, getting probed by the FBI first for um, for our people out in um, in Great Britain, the Brexit. Little Billy Bragg for you. At least my version of it. When one voice rules the nation Because they're top of the pile It doesn't mean their vision is the clearest No! The voices of the people They're falling on deaf ears Our politicians They all become careerists They must declare their interests uh, But not their company car Is there more to a seat in parliament To sit in on your ass and the best of all, this bad bunch ah, shouting to be heard above the sound of ideologies clashing. <laughs> Damn, Billy Bragg, Billy Bragg, my man, Billy Bragg. Uh, so. So let's jump right into these stories here today. So we got, um, let's start with, uh, hmm, any, meeny, miny, mo. Let's start with, uh, let's start with Argentina. So, so Argentina, at Argentina, homelessness rising in Argentina. You heard? No, no, you haven't heard because it's all the, all the, uh, the focus in South America is not on Argentina, it's on Venezuela, where things aren't so bad. But, but the United States is declaring it a humanitarian effort. What about the what about Argentina? K- kids living in boxes in Argentina. You didn't hear? Uh, so let's look at it. Buenos Aires, Argentina, the capital, a smiling two-year-old Valentine Alleman runs down the sidewalk in Buenos Aires, dodging cardboard boxes, a worn-out sofa and broken refrigerator without nose. Noticing the car zooming dangerously close to her and others. Risk of living on the street. This is risks of living on the street. But we don't hear about this in America. I thought uh, South America, everybody who is sucked up to the IMF and, and, and uh, you know, uh, you know, in Argentina is, uh, is, is doing well. You know, everybody in South America, as long as you, as long as you succumb to, the, to American imperialism, everything is fine, man. You got no problems, no crises. Oh, yeah, yeah, you got a few people, you got a couple of kids living in the street. Well, you know, get, pick yourself up by your bootstraps, guys. That's what they tell you. A makeshift tent of cardboard and plastic bags on the side of, it's just pointing out the hypocrisy of South America, right? where the United States is, is actively creating, actively, aggressively trying to overthrow a, a, a leader of a sovereign nation, Venezuela, but when when all shit when when all push comes to shove and when you really analyze it when you really put the the countries of South America under a microscope you realize that Argentina is is per- perhaps far worse than Venezuela but there's no crises there we haven't we're not ready to overthrow Argentina why because it's it's it, we've we've already taken care of that they already we already indebted them right? and there's no oil but. Uh, being here with the children is not nice. The main risk is their health, Valentine's mother said. With the kids, uh, kids played with uh, used toys. They want to watch TV. My oldest asks, why can't we uh, be at home with our TV in our bed? Families uh, living on the streets outside shopping malls, bus stations, and parks have become increasingly common sites in Buenos Aires. As an economic crisis, soaring inflation and a spike in utility bills fueled by the austerity measures have uh, fueled by austerity measures. <laughs> who, 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 who inflicted austerity measures? We're going to find out. Have left more people unable to afford a home. 
The long-running crises sharpened in 2018 when Argentine peso uh, lost about half its value following a run on the currency. <laughs> a run on the banks, eh? It's, I mean, I'm, it's not funny. It's, it's just funny. The hypocrisy of the United States' position is funny. The, the circumstance of kid living in the street on a, on a you know, dead mattress is not funny. The number of people in extreme poverty in Argentine capitals, capital, the country's wealthiest area, has doubled in the past three years to 6.5%. Wow, that's, that's a lot. I mean, six out of 100 people are living on the street, or about 100, 198,000 people. That's a lot of people, according to official numbers, figures. The Buenos Aires city government has yet to release homeless numbers for 2018, but local civic uh, groups estimate the figure at around 8,000 people in Buenos Aires. So Argentina continues to lose purchasing power to an inflation rate reaching nearly 47% last year, the highest since 1991. And uh, many are frustrated by the decisions by President Masario Macri, Fucking get him out, man. Throw, overthrow him. Coup. Where's, where's Abraham? Where's, where's Abrams and Pompeo and Trump? Fucking look, there's a crisis. Get in there and throw, overthrow the government. Overthrow the government. To slash subsidies and utilities and public. On average, in the past year, natural gas has, has shot up 77%. Electricity, 46%. And water, 26%. Hyperinflation, but it's I. But they're not. I thought their uh, capitalism works, right? It works everywhere as long as you, as long as we're in your pocket. I, I don't want to go too long on this this subject, but I'm just trying to point out that kids in in Argentina are on the street. We don't see kids in in our country on the street because they'll stuff them off into you know into uh, into the homeless shelters, right? But you see plenty of other people on the street, right? So their problem is the problem of of uh, homelessness. What's the breakdown in, in Argentina? It's mostly white people. See that? 96.7% white. They're mostly Italians too. 62% of the population is from uh, Italy, I believe. In, in, I'm not really sure, the, but the, right around the time of the uh, World War II, a lot of the Italians that were escaping fascism, I believe, from, from the German invasion and the Italian rise. But look at the chunk of property they have. It's a huge piece of property with Chile right on the side there, uh, next to Brazil. So they're, they're suffering over there. But uh, I, I just, I'm wondering, where's, uh, where's, the, where's the outcry? Where is the, where is the humanitarian crisis? Where's the aid ship flying in from New York? Where's the aid? Where's Marco Rubio saying that we have a crisis in Argentina? Not in Zips. So, um, so let's watch this for a second. This is Trump. Let's switch gears. Trump on healthcare, <laughs> or lack thereof. So, so, so now that RussiaGate is over, and the Democrats are swiftly shifting gears because they lost on that front. They tried to frame the American president as a spy, a Putin puppet, a a a, uh, a, a literally in the pocket of a foreign, a hostile foreign power, is how the our Democrats, the the party of the party of the people. Uh, try frame, try to frame the American president as a uh, as a as a spy, right? So now that they lost on that front, they they they're switching gears to healthcare, and here's Trump fumble the ball on healthcare. Let's listen. Your staff uh, opposed to you and your views on healthcare. The Republican Party is the Repu and and you will see this very soon, because Obamacare is a disaster. It's too expensive by far. People can't afford it, and the deductible is horrible. So the premiums cost too much. The deductible is horrible. The only all right. Just as a as a caveat, we already know this, Mr. Trump. We you've been saying you said it throughout your campaign in 2015 and 16. We're going to get something much better. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna repeal Obamacare. We're gonna get rid of it, and we're gonna get something much better. Now this is health care. This is people's people's health. Right, and and you're talking, you're, you're down in Venezuela, c creating a crisis, but the American people aren't even covered, and they're and they're 
they're they're hurting for health care. They're getting squeezed by the in the the, the the pharmaceutical industrial complex, getting raped on on the high costs of uh, medication and care. Now, where's your better? Where is your better? You want to attack the Democrats, but where is your better? The difference between now and the other administration is that we're administering Obamacare very well. So we're, we've made it better, but it's still horrible, no good. Uh, it's something that we can't live with in this country because it's far too expensive for the people, not only for the country, but I'm not even thinking about for the country. It's too expensive. The premiums are too expensive. People are going broke trying to pay for it. And the deductibles are averaging over $7,000. All of the money he's talking about goes to intermediaries. Right? I know people think, oh, it's socialism, right? Because you, you can't have universal health care for all because it's socialism, right? It's fucking so stupid, right? You want to get, look, if it's socialism, why don't you get rid of a park? Right? That's socialism. Get rid of the police. Get rid of the, the fire department. Get rid of, close all the museums. Close everything that is public. Right? Close the bridges, right? Privatize everything. Privatize no city buses, no no subway, no freeway. Right? That's all. That's all socialism, right? Those are social programs for the people. So so close them all, right? Close, shut them all down, and privatize everything. That's what you're saying. Stupid, right? So the idea that if you took some of that away, and you put the focus on what people need, which is healthcare. 40% of the country, not 40%, four, 40 million people in this country live in poverty and get free health care anyway, right? And the rest of the people get hosed and and, ha- and, then, and then people over 65 also get, or 62, whatever it is, Medicaid. The point is that if you, the, all of the money that Trump just babbled out, all the spending is, is a result of intermediaries, insurance companies, a million strong, enormous buildings in every city in the country, Aetna and, and, and U.S. healthcare and this one and that one and, and Empire and fucking all that shit, right? All those bullshit companies, right, are just sucking the money, sucking the life out of, out of uh, the American people to get in the way of them in healthcare. Right. Big pharma, big pharma bleeding the shit out of people, bleeding the shit out of people. Right? Universal single payer health care, Donald. Say it. Say it. Please say it. So you have to spend 7000 before you get anything. That's a very unusual circumstance. So the deductibles are way too high. Obamacare is a disaster. So we're going to be the part. And I said it yesterday and I'm. Obamacare was a was a compromise. If you remember, Obama wanted you know he ran on universal single payer health care, and the Republican Party shut him down, and Democrats went along with it, and you got Obamacare, which is a which is a a hybrid a hybrid shit sandwich, which means that everybody should be covered, but you're going to pay through the nose to be covered. That wasn't the intention. It's not universal coverage. It's universal care for all. It drives the price down, not up. Everybody says, oh, your taxes are going to triple. No, no. You, the, when you take out the middle, man, you, the, val, the price goes down and, and, price, and, and healthcare becomes competitive where big pharma can't just charge $75 for a pill and, and $6,000 for an injection and $28,592 to remove a, a toenail as a single payer. You get five dollars for a pill. You get two hundred dollars for an operation, right? And that's how you 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 squeeze them. But with big pharma and 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 the the uh, insurance companies, you can't get it done. And Trump knows that, but he's trying to he's he's trying to find the easier, softer way, the way that has never worked historically and never will work. But I mean continue. it, hundred percent. I understand healthcare now, especially very well. A lot of people don't understand it. We are going to be the Republicans, the party of great health care. The Democrats are, they've let you down. They came up with Obamacare, it's terrible. I got rid of the individual mandate. That was the worst part of Obamacare because people were forced to pay a lot of money to get health care that they didn't want, okay? Now they don't have to pay that money. 
People are all over this country thanking me. Every time I go out, they thank me. They don't have to pay a vast amount of money to have bad health care. So we got rid of the individual mandate. That was a big thing. We will, you watch, we're going to be the party of great health care. And the Democrats have let you down. They've really let you down. Obamacare doesn't work. It's too expensive. And when you're watching him, he really, really, it, it just, it reeks of not knowing what the hell he's talking about. He keeps saying the same thing over. We're going to get something much better, much better. When? When? Get your jerk-off Republicans that you love so much to present a bill. Where's there? There's not even a law. There's nothing. They're doing nothing. Nothing. And, and they won't do anything. And the, the, you take a look at everything with deductibles. It's a disaster. It's a disaster for our people. We're not going to allow it to go. So we're coming up with plans. We have a lawsuit right now going where phase one of the lawsuit uh, terminates Obamacare, essentially terminates Obamacare. You know that. That's the Texas lawsuit. We think it'll be upheld, or we think it'll do very well in the Supreme Court. And if the Supreme Court rules... Okay, he's just talking bullshit. Again, Trump talking bullshit on health care. Universal single-payer health care. That's the way to go. It's no, there's no doubt about it. You, you cover everybody in a general way. Doctors, lawyers, you know, all these guys. Yeah, okay, you, you know, doctors, I know you went to school. You wanted to be a millionaire. You wanted a house in the Hamptons. You might just have to settle for a nice apartment somewhere or, or a modest, a modest size house and a modest size income. If you want to be a millionaire, don't be a fucking doctor. Okay. Be something else. Build houses. Go steal, bank, rob banks or something. But if you want to be in healthcare and help people, don't stop worrying about your, your million, the million dollars in your pocket, right? And we bring it back down to size, right? right? Healthcare is it's 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 top heavy. Hospitals and doctors they make it too much money, right? Bring them back down to size, right? And let people have an affordable care. They'll be fine, right? People will be fine, right? Everybody will be covered. You, you, this business of, I want to keep my, my insurance, my insurance. What fucking insurance? What are you talking about? You're getting robbed. You want to keep your insurance in a, a broken, you want to keep broken insurance in a, in, a, in a system of insurance for everybody? Stupid. Pre-existing conditions will be covered, right? That argument is also dead, right? Universal single-payer health care for all. Thanks, Donald. So let's talk about the this final story. I'm going to do this quick because I don't really give a shit. <laughs> so FBI could review the many suspicions around Smollett case. So Jesse Smollett was uh, exonerated on 16, 16 felony charges in, in, the, in the state of Chicago, right? And, uh, I mean, it's just it's unprecedented. We've never seen anything like that. If you want to talk about a favor, a political favor for somebody, this is the, the greatest idea, right? The greatest uh, example of it. Now, you know, in this process through the FBI, don't expect Smollett, Jesse Smollett, to face charges for what he did. That technically is over, right? That's, that's over because the, 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 the courts have ruled and, and to overthrow it is, is not, not necessarily going to happen. And it's not necessarily what we want to happen. What we want to happen is this bitch right here. This is the uh, attorney general. Her name is Kim Fox. And what did she do or who did she talk to to get that favor done? You want to tell me that they just decided that this is a bad case to pursue and that, um, and that uh, uh, we're going to just let poor Jesse go because Jesse's a good old boy, right? And we're going to just let him go. No, there's something going on there. There's some fucking shit going on there. Why, why uh, the, this attorney general suddenly decided to drop the charges. Uh, Trump tweeted that the agency and the Department of Justice would be reviewing the case, which the president called an embarrassment to the nation. Yeah, of course it is. It's an embarrassment. It's, it's right up there with Russiagate, you know? Trump's tweet, maybe that was, that was the point. To Maybe it's a CIA plot. They get in there. They do a favor. They try to shift the narrative to racism. You know, look, a, a uppity black Jew gay gets away with it. He, he, he harasses, he, he, uh, he implies, uses hate speech and, and, and creates a hate crime against white people and, and gets away with it. 
all right, and get, a, get away with it. It makes your blood boil when you think about what he got away with, what he tried to do and what he got away with. And could it be a, you know, could it could it be a, pl- a ploy? Who, to, to, so it needs an investigation. Who gave the order to let this fucker go? All right, so the Empire actor orchestrated a fake attack involving two men who beat him on a, a downtown Chicago street. The president did not specify... <clears throat> what aspect of the case would be probed, and the Department of Justice officially denied, declined to comment. Right. So they're going to come down on this fucker. Right. 16 felonies. 16 felonies he walked away on, right? So so that's really it about that shit. Right? So uh, Marcus Conti reporting today on um, final days of exile. It's a Friday. Still living in exile, living in YouTube YouTube prison. YouTube prison, they keep you away from your family and your friends. They keep you in this little box in solitary confinement. And only the, only the, only the immediate family that knows where you are can find you. <laughs> it's all good, though. Right? Still reporting. Still, still talking about it, man. You got to keep talking about the truth. You know what I'm saying? Marcus Conti reporting. 